Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our cottage class, the Archetype Pattern Workshop. Now, in this class, we use and teach by the true and original name of our Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Now, Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Now, Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh, it's pure spirit, and in this state, he's incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself. Because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right with himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this shape and form can only be seen in the divine vision and understood in the divine revelation. Later on, the South Saint Spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given up to salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the original pattern of the universe. It is called the, it is called the pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh, there's the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. He instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe operates according to the structure and function of the threefold tabernacle pattern 
and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the 10 constitutional primary objectives of this class are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, or Satan, and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And the eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained and there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watch with this peace, our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have prayer by Dr. Bud Munch. Our scripture lesson will be... Second Corinthians, the third chapter. Second Corinthians, the third chapter. The microphone. Our scripture will be Dr. Irene Ramirez. And we won't have any music this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Father, we are grateful for this opportunity to learn more of your purpose, pattern, and plan. We are so grateful that out of the billions of people in your creation, you have seen it fit to call us to learn and know as much as we can about your purpose, pattern, and plan. We are convinced that you are the almighty creator, that you offered up your son as a sacrifice for all of the sins that have been created and will be created. We thank you so very, very much and ask that you lead and guide us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. I'll be reading 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, and I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some of his epistles, accommodation to you, or letters accommodation from you? Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles the Messiah ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living Elohim, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the heart. And such confidence have we through the Messiah toward Yahweh. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our efficiency is of Yahweh, who also hath made us able to minister of the New Testament, not in the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stone, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly 
behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance was which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For the ministration of the condemnation be glory. Much more do the ministration of the righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in that, this respect, by reason of the glory that excellence excel, excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, which much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness, great plainlessness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in the Messiah. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when they shall turn to Yahweh, the veil shall be taken away. Now Yahweh is spirit, and where the spirit of Yahweh is, there is liberty. But we all, which with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of Yahweh, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of Yahweh. And I have read Second Corinthians, the third chapter. Let's all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, welcome again, and uh, start for class, we're going to have our first speaker be Dr. Joe Ceballos. Good morning. Good morning. Now you can say good morning, because we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> again, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thanks. It's always a pleasure we have right there. to share the things that I have learned since being here under this teaching it goes back to 1970, 71 when uh, Tom Hill brought me in for the first time then after that I was able to meet everyone else that are present here uh, Bud Wunsch, Dr. Bud Wunsch, uh, uh, Dr. Iggy, uh, Ignacio Ramirez um, Dr. Will Williams and, uh, and uh, Dr. Irene Ramirez and uh, everybody out there that, that has that we have seen through time, especially uh, I will not forget uh, Ontario, Ontario class. You know, this is this is broken heart, not being able to be under the same roof. Uh, anyhow, uh, this teaching is a product of Dr. Henry Clipper Kenley. In the year 1931, as the moderator already explained, uh, he was caught up uh, at the same time. He was in, uh, in his own in the vision. He, has, he had brought to us the Ayah Asharaya, which means I will be what I will to be. See, uh, Elohim had presented himself or commissioned Moses back in the of those days so he can commission him so he can go back to Egypt so he can bring out the Israelites out of Egypt through the uh, Red Sea into the wilderness of Sinai they abided here for about 40 years 40 years and then uh, Yahshua the son of Nan took over and he took them over to the land where milk and honey where will flow milk and honey which is Canaan's land and this tabernacle was also uh, with them and uh, was established Mount uh, right here. Uh, one second. Mount Sion. See? And later on, for those ones that are kind of new, uh, the, the furniture that were in this old tabernacle went into the temple, right. which was in the Mount Moriah. See? And later on, when we talk about uh, 
that uh, because this is according to Melchizedek, priesthood of Abrahamic promise, one and three years before the Mosaic law. So, so we go back, and this is the bl uh, promise that Yahweh had given to Mo uh, Abraham right. back in, the, in those days. You can read in Genesis 28, 14 for me, please. Genesis 28. 14. Speaking to the mic. Genesis 28 and 14. Right. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the famine of the earth be blessed. See, right there. The, the seed, you see, this seed came about. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to cut it short because you know, it, 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 I'm getting red lights already regarding the plates, you know. And I know Dr. Will Williams, he will expand much better than I do in the sense that, it, that the, this seed was Isaac, Jacob, and so forth and so on, which eventually will bring us to Yahshua the Messiah, which the world calls Jesus Christ. And... Uh, being a Gentile myself and everyone else, and except for some Jews, you know, uh, in Israel and what have you, but there's a difference between, and these times, what I mean by that is this, during these times, Yahweh Elohim was dealing only with the Jews, with the Israelites. Mm -hmm. But then he was not dealing with us, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. See, with the Gentiles, you know, we were able to be grafted in seven years after Pentecost. So, it would have been for this promise, you, the, 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 we, the, the Gentiles, we would have had been able to know nothing about this pattern. Mm -hmm. It would be, you know, so at this present time, we're able to be partakers of, of this beautiful vision and of this beautiful kingdom through the time through uh, the present, you know, how coming to these classes, this is how we get the Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, a little bit as we understand, because see, here in the class, we go to, to the law and to the prophecy, and they speak not according to these words, because there's no light in them. Nobody, uh, out there in the world, they, they, there's a whole lot of people talking stuff, and what have you, and they give a novel, you know, they give themselves uh, commendations such as uh, the price, Nobel prizes, and things like that. But that doesn't quicken the whole the, uh, the, the spirit in us. Okay, so sorry for the interruption. Um, that's about my, my testimony at the present time. Uh, we were kind of late. We already wasted it 20 minutes, and I don't want to waste any more time. <laughs> Uh, and I yield the floor to the moderator. Thank Hallelujah. you so much. Hey there, Dr. Joseph Weiss. Okay, uh, our, next, our next speaker will be Dr. Will Williams. It's always good to be here and to talk about this great and awesome, colossal, stupendous panoramic vision revelation given to us by Yahweh our Elohim. Yeah. Uh, continue on what the first speaker said about Abraham. Um, matter of fact, let's just get that. Genesis 12 and 1. We'll start there. Um, a promise was given to a man, Abraham. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're going to read it. Now, another thing significant about Abraham is this. He is considered to be technically the first monotheist right. in history. 
all right? Because prior to that, cultures and peoples tended to be polytheistic. That is to say, the belief in many gods. Here is here's a man who come out of a culture that believed in many gods. Well, let's read. Genesis 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now Yahweh has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, mm -hmm. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, the previous speaker talked about Jew and Gentile, because when you really stop and think about it, I know we, you know, have so many nations. I mean, in the United Nations, I think it's like 179 official nations, okay? But then even within those nations, you got nations and ethnic groups and so forth and right, so on, right. okay? But to Yahweh, human beings only come in two categories, Jew and Gentile. <laughs> If, if you're not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. No matter what you may ascribe yourself to be, you know, but if you're not Jew, then you're a Gentile as far as Yahweh is concerned. And so this is who he's dealing with. In fact, uh, instead of saying Jew, actually I should say Hebrew, because the term Jew comes about later on during the Babylonian exile. So, but the first Hebrew is Abraham. Abraham is the first Hebrew, and, and what made him a Hebrew was he came across, well, let's read Joshua, I think it's the 24th chapter. Uh, I think I left my Bible in here. <clears throat> yeah, just start reading, 24 and 1. Joshua, 24 and 1. Mm -hmm. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they present themselves before Elohim. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, you, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abram, and the father of Nacor, and they served idols, and took their and took your father Abram, Abraham, from the other side of the flood, and led him uh, throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. Okay, good enough. I don't know if you can hear me. I look at that mic. Yeah, it's got to get closer. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> now. Abraham came from the other side of the flood. Now, when it says that, and I thought she read that from the Holy Name Bible, I think, didn't you? Yes. All right. Now, when it says from the other side of the flood, some people tend to think it means the, the great flood. Noah. Like Noah, <laughs> and that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the river Euphrates, which would flood periodically during the year to bring down silt from the mountains into the lowlands, which is why it was good farming there in the Fertile Crescent. See it? Today, we would call that Iraq, all right? But that's the home of ancient Babylon, right. or the ancient Chaldeans, of which Abraham come out of. Abraham came out of a city called Ur of Chaldea, and we read that his father, his father Terah, served idols. Mm -hmm. You do a little research, <laughs> Terah made idols, okay? He, I mean, he had a shop, you know, like Idols are Us. You know, I mean, he, you know, you go there and you say, oh, you know, hey, what do you need? You know, we've got these golden hands here. You need to sacrifice the mole? Very well, you know, for 199 shekels, you know, you can have the, you know, the comfort of doing that right in your own home. You know, that was, that, that was Abraham's father. And he, you know, he made idols for all kinds of gods. So this is where he came up out of. Yahweh drew him right. out of that. See? And told him that I'm going to give you that, that through your seed, all the families of the earth was going to be blessed. So out of a polyistic culture came Abram out, and he became a monotheist, or that is to say a believer in one L. Okay? Now, this promise that it was given to Abraham, all right, now that promise, and he read it up here, the previous speaker, he says, look, he says, Melchizedek priesthood, 
Abraham, Abrahamic promise 430 years before the Mosaic law. Okay? So now this is here. Let's look here. If you remember our lessons, right? We, we went over these lessons about the ages and dispensations. Okay? And we, we have here says Melchizedek priesthood and Abrahamic promise. Now what we just read in Genesis 12 and 1, that was the beginning of the Melchizedek and Abrahamic dispensation. Third dispensation. See? Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of that. All right? In other words, it is a dispensation of faith. Mm -hmm. That means this. Abraham was not under any any uh given law of carnal ordinances mm -hmm. like, the, like the Israelites were. See, it says 430 years before the Mosaic law. This Mosaic law here consisted of these 613 carnal ordinances. Okay? But, but Abraham was not under that. His, here he is right here. Abrahamic promise. And then we got a line here. It says the promise fulfilled. First here with the Jews on the day of Pentecost. They received the Holy Spirit. Then seven years later, the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, the whole idea is, is to show forth. Well, first, let's ask this. Why did Yahweh give these Israelites a set of cardinal ordinances in the first place? All right? See, we need to, we need to understand that. Right. And, uh, yeah, I need a plate. If you just go look for plate... Um, I think it's 23. It's the one with Abraham and Melchizedek. Okay, so when you go through the plates on top, there's like one correlates with 11. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Because so, he's got them in duplicates. Yeah, they're yeah. numbered on the top. So I'm going to have to buy another chart so we can <laughs> get these separated. But while he's looking for that, let's get Galatians 3, and I think it's 3 and 15 maybe, I'm thinking. See, because we want to understand, well, what, what is all of this about? What, what, what's the whole point? You know of this, and so we want to try to get some some answers to this. Galatians three and fifteen, you said. Yeah, what does that say? Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Mm -hmm. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confined, no man dis can disannul or add it thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He worked. He was not. He saith not. And to seed plural, but to seed singular, which is his Messiah. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh in his Messiah, the law, which came 430 years after cannot disannul, that it should be made promise of none effect. For the inheritance be by the law, it is no more by promise, but Yahweh giveth it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was con con ordained by the by angels in the hand of a mediator. Okay, now, that's it. Now, we just read it. it says, to Abraham and his seed were promises made. And he said, and to seeds as of many, but not, not as to many, but as to one. His one seed, that one seed, the Messiah. This is the seed of Abraham. Right. See, of which Isaac was a type of, because he was, because Abraham was old in age, and he and Sarah were promised a son. See, that son came about by the Holy Spirit. See, performing that. But that was a type in the shadow of the true seed, who is Yahshua, the Messiah. Now, also it said this. It says 19, it, verse 19, where it says, Well, then, wherefore then serveth the law? Well, it was added right. because of transgression. Mm -hmm. What transgression? That's it. This one right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, the transgression in the garden. See, that's why it was added. See, and it wasn't added to save man. It was added to show them up. It was added to make the man feel even more condemned than he was without it. Right. See, 
Romans 5 and 12. Yeah, then we can. And I need a clamp. Wherefore? Uh, it's probably right there in that bag. Okay. okay. Romans 5 and 12. Uh huh. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Right who was the figure of him that was to come. Okay. Now, death reigned over all men because of Adam's transgression here. All right? See? He says, now, it says, where well, there is no law, sin is not imputed. But there was sin in the world anyway. And man died because of that transgression. See, sin is transgression of the law. The law was transgressed up here. The man died. That death passed on all of mankind. Right. All of mankind. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now here we got Abraham here. He's drawn out. One man. First man. The first monotheist. Drawn out. Given a promise. Okay. Now we've told you about the tabernacle pattern. We told you that the tabernacle pattern. Come over here. See there are seven steps. In the tabernacle pattern. Uh, let me try this. There's seven steps in the tabernacle pattern, just as there are seven steps in the migratory pattern. The correlation between these two plates, the migratory pattern and the tabernacle pattern, are the same correlations you're going to use on all of these plates. Right. Okay? Right. It, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. Because I want to come over here and want to talk about Abraham and Melchizedek. All right? Now, get me, just to set this off, Genesis, I think it's 28 and 10. What does that say? Genesis 28 and 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba uh -huh. and went towards Haran. And he lit upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was not. And he took of the stones of, of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in the place to sleep. And he dreamed and, he hold, and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to the heavens. And behold, the angels of Elohim ascended and descended on it. And behold, Yahweh stood above it and said, I am Yahweh, the El of Abraham thy father, and El of Isaac. And the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give thee to thy seed. Okay. Now, this is Jacob having a dream. His dream is going according to the pattern. He took some stones and laid and they set them up, and he laid down to sleep. That's a type of death. Right. He is now immersed in a dream. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now he's elevated in the spirit because now he sees angels ascending and descending on this veil, mm -hmm. on this ladder, rather, on this ladder. Right. And at the top of the ladder, he sees Yahweh Elohim at the top. Okay? And, and it's really like a ladder. And that's really what he's looking at. Mm -hmm. Ascending and descending. That's what I want you to get out of this scripture. The principle of ascending and descending. Because that's what these plates do. All right? Some cases they ascend. Some cases they descend. Some cases they do both. An example of them doing both is this migratory pattern. Because Abraham started up here. Then his seed had to go down. Let's read that. Genesis 15 and 12. Genesis 15 and 12. 
And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Mm -hmm. And lo, a horror of a great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of an assurity that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Okay, shall be in a, a, a stranger in a land that is not theirs. That means what? See, they're in the land that's theirs now, but they will be in another land that, that ain't. What, that, what does that mean? That means they're going to have to come down here to Egypt. Right. That's a descending. Read. I'm sorry. Five and tw 15 and 12. <laughs> The sun was going down to a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of a great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, No one assurity that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs. All right, that's descending. Read. And shall serve them, and they shall be afflicted, shall afflict them four hundred, four hundred years. Four hundred years, see. Now we read in Galatians four hundred and thirty years. Mm -hmm. see? And some would, some people would say, well, there's a discrepancy there. Maybe we'll touch on it as we go along. Continue. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, mm -hmm. and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. They shall come out with great substance, see, and come back to the land that they started from. Mm -hmm. See, that's descending and ascending. Okay? Now, let's read this about, uh, let's get to Melchizedek. Uh, that should be somewhere around the 17th chapter, I think, of Genesis. Genesis. Um... At least I thought it was. Oh no, that's the um, uh, uh, it's the fourteenth fourteenth chapter, uh, Genesis fourteen, and uh, we'll start at seventeen. Let me let me preface this with this. Uh, oh, why not? Let's just read the story. Uh, Start with verse, uh, uh, oh my gosh, verse 8, start with verse 8. 14 and 8? Yeah. And there went out the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Ad Adam, and the king of Zebulon, and the king of Bela, and the same as Zorah. And they joined battles with them in the valley of Sinah, Sindem. And in Shadorlah, and the king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, and Amrel, king of Shinar, and Akwakim of Elazar, four kings of five, with five. And the valley of Shadorlah was full of slime pits. And the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and found there. And they that remained fled to the mountains. And they took the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all the victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelled in Sodom and his, go and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and took Abram, he, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Nadar, and Amorite, brother of Eschapol, and the brother of Anner. And these were confederates with Abraham. With Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his, his trained servant and bore his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, and he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Horpah, and which which is in the left hand of the Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the woman also, 
and the people. And the king of Sidon went out to meet him after his return to the slaughter of Shadorlam and of the kings that were with him, and the valley of Shebel, which is the king of Del. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of El Elijah. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of El Elijah, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed be El Elijah, which had delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Tithes. Tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the person and take the goods to thyself. And Abram, Abram said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my well, that's, hand. That's good enough. I don't need, I don't need all of that. But, but, but you read the parts that I needed to. wanted everybody to hear. All right. There were these five kings, and they came, and they raided Canaan's land. All right? You know, you know how people do. They raid, you know, <laughs> take goods and, you know, horses and people, you know, women and all that. You know, and they raided. And they took lots. They took Lot, who was Abraham's nephew. Right. All right? And so Abraham got his servants together. And, you know, he, he had his own little private army. Mm -hmm. And he went and rescued them. All right? And slaughtered the five kings. I think he found them in a he found them in a cave. Right. See, and he slew them. Talking about Abraham, he mm -hmm. slew he slew these five kings that we read who they were. All right. Mm -hmm. And so all the goods that see, and not only did he get his goods back, but they got all the other goods that these kings took from other peoples. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so they took all these goods. And so now here's Melchizedek here. He's king and high priest of Salem, you know, and he's the, the priest of El Elyon. And El Elyon simply means the most high Elohim. Elohim. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm pointing here is because on this plate, this is where the, your correlations start. Because this is where the story starts. Right. Here. And then you're going to have to descend. Now, it starts here, see, in the most holy place. Now, the most holy place, as we've told you on this... Let's just look here. We told you there's a bloodline, right? Mm -hmm. There's blood on this altar. Draw a line. See, we got blood here. So, th so this is a bloodline all the way across these plates in this position. That's a bloodline. Right. Here we got the brazen labor, which corresponds with the Red Sea here. That's a water line all across these plates. That's a water line. Okay. Here we have the cup of holy anointing oil at the door, typifying spirit. That's at the door, which is the fourth step. So there's a spirit line. See, that would be like the cloud here that led the Israelites out of Egypt here. See, so that's a spirit line all going all the way across, a spirit line. Okay. Likewise, in the most holy place, the most holy place typifies heaven. So the most holy place on all these plates typifies heaven. So likewise, there's a heaven line. See? All right? Now, in saying that, here's Abraham giving obeisance, or, you know, to Melchizedek, who's the king and high priest of Salem. Right. Which which is Jerusalem at this time. It wasn't called it wasn't called Jerusalem yet because see Jerusalem comes from the word Yahweh. Yahru Shalom. Mm. The name yet it couldn't be called Yahru Shalom yet because Yahweh hadn't revealed his name yet. Right. At this time. So it couldn't be called Jerusalem or Yahru or Yah or Yahru Shalom. It was just Salem or Shalom or the city of peace. Mm -hmm. Melchizedek, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. So he was both king of righteousness. And king of peace, as well as a high priest. Okay? Now here, we see him overshadowing Abraham. Right. See? He's overshadowing Abraham, just like, uh, let's, let's draw a line. Well, find me a tab. Yeah, give me the tabernacle. One, two. Yeah, while you're doing that, I'll get another clamp. No, put 
Okay. Now. All right. Okay, let's look at this. Here's Melchizedek. He's overshadowing Abraham. All right, let's draw a line. Let's draw a line. Here. Here's the ark with the wings. Well, archangels on the on the ark of the covenant. And the and the angels overshadowing. Right. See? The ark. Because the angels had their wings that come out and would spread and would meet at the midline, and the cloud would sit on the mercy seat between the two angels under the overshadowed wings. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right? Now, it said that Abraham gave a tithe. Right. Tenth. Or See, which is a tenth. Mm -hmm. One tenth. That's what a tithe is. Mm -hmm. A tithe gave one tenth of, of his spoils to Melchizedek, which probably stood in, you know, sheep and goats and stuff like that for sacrifice and things like that you know maybe a few gold and silver and all. but whatever he had one tenth of it he gave to Melchizedek look at the number 10 mm -hmm. draw a line what can you think of in the most holy place of this tabernacle where the number 10 would stand out for you the law tables of stone the tables of stone 10 commandments mm -hmm. the law mm -hmm. See, the tables and stuff. See, that's how you correlate that. See? See that? Mm -hmm. Now, let's read. Uh, let's read Hebrews um, 6, I think it's 619. Yes. Hebrews 6 and the 19. Mm -hmm. For the law made nothing perfect, mm -hmm. but the bringing in, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now, see, now the law, talking about the law of carnal ordinance, right. it didn't do anything mm -hmm. for the Israelites. Didn't do anything for us either <laughs> because it wasn't given to us. Right. <laughs> the Gentiles. Right. See, but even to the Jews, it, it didn't do anything for them. See, but read. And as much as without an oath, he was made priest. And see, now as without oath, he was made priest. Go ahead. For those priests were made without an oath. You see, they were made without an oath. In other words, see. Oh, here I am. Let's look here. The Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood, it was, it was, they were consecrated by Moses. Right. Moses uh, washed Aaron and his two sons' feet and consecrated them to the priesthood. But he didn't make them an oath. They didn't make an oath saying, well, I'm going to be a priest forever. Ever, yeah. They couldn't do that. Right. They had to retire at 50 years of age. Mm -hmm. See? They had to retire. So they couldn't make an oath saying, well, I'm going to be a priest. Aaron could not make an oath saying, I'm going to be priest forever. Why? He's going to die. Right. And when he died, someone else is going to take over. Mm -hmm. right. See? So he couldn't make an oath saying, I'm going to be a priest forever. None of them could do that. No one can do that. Mm -hmm. A guru can't say, <laughs> I'm going to be a guru forever. Yeah. You know, a preacher can't say, I'm going to be a preacher forever. Uh, a sensei can't say that. I'm going to be a sensei forever. An imam cannot say that. A pope cannot even say that. Right. I'm going to be a pope forever. Because why? They're all going to die. Right. They're going to be replaced. That's the nature of the Levitical priesthood. It was limited. Because when a priest died, he had to be replaced. But see, but now with Yahshua, read that, uh, the 20th verse again. As much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath, but this is with an oath by him. Where are you reading? I'm reading um, 6 and 20? No. You're, not re you're reading 6 and 20? No, you have me 7 and 20. No, no, 6 and 20. <laughs> 6 19. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, 6 
Yeah, that's right. Though, though, that's you know, it's germane. We'll get back to that, but I want to set that up first. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Hebrews six and nineteen. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Yahshua made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, yeah. See, now I want to, yeah, I want to get the, the predicate first before I get to the subject because mm -hmm. the, the oath is important. But to get to that, first we got to see how Yahshua was made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why. Now the oath, see what she was reading. See, she's gonna read it. Seven and one. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High, El, and, Mo, and met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth of all, first being by the interpretation of king of the righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace whose father and mother were not recorded in the genealogies mm -hmm. as much, neither the beginning of his days nor end of his life, but being a representation of the son of Yahweh for the con continuance of the priesthood. Okay, see, now that's the reason why. See, see he was, see, even in, the, in history, I'm talking about secular history, you can look up Melchizedek. You are not going to find Melchizedek in no secular history book on the planet. Right. You're just not. And if you do, they're going to refer you back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because he's, that's the Bible is the only place in the records where Melchizedek is mentioned at. And you say, well, how do you know Melchizedek lived? Well, we know Melchizedek lived because Abraham lived. <laughs> and Abraham said Melchizedek lived. Right. You see what I'm saying? Now, we know Abraham existed. The reason why we know Melchizedek existed is because Abraham said he existed. And that the Messiah is coming after the order of Melchizedek. See, keep, let's just, let's just, let's just uh, oh boy, let's just keep reading. Cause see, because really, this, this whole chapter here really explains the whole purpose right here of this, you know, this, in the most holy place. Mm -hmm. he's, he's explaining it to you. Okay, go ahead. Seven and four. Now consider how great this man was, mm -hmm. and to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of his spoils, and verily they are that are of the son of Levi, who receiveth the office of the priesthood, have a great commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that that is of the brethren, through they come out of the loins of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But he who descend is not counted from re them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed by the le by the better. And here moral or men receive tithes, but there but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth forever. And if I may say so, Levi also who received tithes Pay tithes to, in Abraham. See, there's Levi. Levi's not even born yet, but he's in Abraham's Lord. Right. He's paying tithes to Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. See, even though he's in his loins, in other words, he's giving deference to him. <laughs> Levi, who's the priest, the, right. the, priest of, uh, the priesthood tribe, is giving deference to a greater priesthood. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. For he was yet in the loins of his father. When Melchizedek met him, mm -hmm. if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, mm -hmm. that further need was there that another priesthood should rise after the order of Melchizedek. See, in other words, what's the sense of Yahshua coming? Because Yahshua is coming after the order of Melchizedek. Right. If the Levitical priesthood was perfect, perfect right. if the 613 ordinances were perfect, what need would there be for another one coming after the order of Melchizedek to, one, perform the law, you know, the law of carnal ordinances, fulfill them, and move them out the way? What need was there for that? Right. See, unless there was someone else coming 
after the order of Melchizedek. Why? Because of this. It was given. Abraham was given a promise. Right. He was given a promise. See, and the promise supersedes the law of carnal ordinances. Mm -hmm. Continue. And not be called after the order of Aaron. See now, yeah, Yahshua was called after the order of Melchizedek, not after not after the order of Aaron, <laughs> the Levitical. That's what the Roman Catholic Church has done. They have priests and stuff. Well, what order are they imitating? Right. They're not imitating Melchizedek. Right. They're imitating Levi. Mm -hmm. Why? Because one pope dies and another pope replaces mm -hmm. him. Just like back here. Another priest died, another priest replaced him. Or retired at 50. And we even, we've had that happen. A pope retired. He didn't die. He just retired. And let somebody else take over. But the point is, it was not, a, it was not an everlasting popehood. Mm, it wasn't perfect. <laughs> so, you understand? Okay, continue. For the priesthood being changed, there was made of necessity a change also of the law. Now, see, if there was a change in the priesthood, mm -hmm. see, because this priesthood came about because of these carnal ordinances, the 613 ordinances. Mm -hmm. See, to have a law, you got to have a priesthood to modify the law, to moderate the law. Right. See? All right. So now he's not covered. See, so now because the priest and now the priesthood has changed. What do you mean? Yahshua is here now. Mm -hmm. His death, burial, resurrection, ascension, uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That changed the priesthood. This is the Melchizedek priesthood now in this age and dispensations. Okay. So with the priesthood being changed, then the law has to be changed. We can't be under a law of carnal witnesses. It's got to be the law. It's got to be. The law of the spirit. Right. Okay? And he's the high priest that mod that moderates this law. Just like the high priest back here moderated the law of cardinal ordinances. Mm -hmm. See, that's why when the inheritance was given out, see, all the inheritance was given out to the 12 tribes. But the 13th tribe, which was the tribe of Levi, did not receive a, a plot of land. Right. They received cities, 48 cities. Throughout the, the inheritances, basically four cities per inheritance, because you figure 48 cities, 48 divided by 12, that's four cities per inheritance. And why? So that they would be, Yahweh would be represented among the inheritance so that if anybody wanted to inquire of Yahweh, they could go to the Levites and say, well, what about this? What's in the law? Can the law say, what does the law say about mm. this or that or the other? Right. See? Continue. For he of whom these things are spoken pertain to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Mm -hmm. For it is evident that our Savior sprang out of Judah. I see, our Savior came out of Judah, which was the kingship tribe, mm -hmm. the tribe of the kings. You know, David, Solomon, you know, that was the kingship tribe. Okay, but read. Of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. Mm hmm and it is yet far more evident for that after the, the similitude of Melchizedek were arise another priesthood who is made not after the law of carnal ordinance of, car, of carnal commandments but after the power of the endless life you see after the power of an endless life in other words he's a priest forever right. he's not going to die and somebody's going to take his place mm -hmm. he is a, not only a high priest but he's also a king so if he's a high priest forever, he's also a king forever. Okay, continue. For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh -huh. For there is barely a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness of unprofitable thereof. For the law made nothing perfect. I said the, the law of carnal ordinances made nothing perfect. In other words, it didn't save you. Right. Because if you if you was guilty of one, you was guilty of the whole thing. See, he who despised Moses' law died. died. Right. And the two or three witnesses from that law. 
that law of carnal ordinances was never designed to save anyone. Right. But it was definitely designed to condemn you. That's why when we read in Galatians, it says, wherefore, why, why was it given? It was given because of transgression up here. See, it wasn't meant to save you. It was meant to condemn you even more because sin without, see, sin's not imputed, but there is no law. Well, now there's a law. Therefore, sin is, imp is imputed, and you're guilty. And the penalty is death. Yes. <laughs> okay? But read. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto Yahweh, and as much as not without an oath, he made a priest. Mm -hmm. For those priests were made without an oath, but this as a, is, but this with an oath by him, and that said unto him, Yahweh swore and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. That's not, see, thou art, Yahweh swore and will not repent or will not change it. Right. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek had no beginning or no, or no ending of things. Mm -hmm. You see? See, see all that? That's just, we, we haven't even left this most holy place yet to come down here. This, this, just all this is up in here. Mm -hmm. All right? Keep reading. By so much. Was Joshua made a surety of a better covenant, mm -hmm. and they truly were many priests, because they were not su suffered to continue by reason of death. Because that's the very that's why there were many priests. Aaron couldn't do it forever. When he died, his sons took over, mm -hmm. and when they died, their sons took over. So that lineage still carries on because to be a, a rabbi, you had to be a part of what they call the kohenim. You have to be of the seed of Aaron. Mm -hmm. And they got genetics to, to determine that. And they have genealogies. They, they keep their history and stuff like that. We may not know it that way, but the Jews, they, they do know their history. Mm -hmm. They do know their genealogies. They know what tribe they're from. Right. See? So, it's still, so that hasn't changed. And when one rabbi dies, another rabbi takes over. Mm -hmm. See, another preacher dies, <laughs> another preacher takes over. Your dean dies, <laughs> and another dean takes over. Okay? <laughs> yeah, all right, so, you know, <laughs> keep reading. But he, but he, because he continued ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Now, see, Yahweh, Yahshua, see, because he continues forever, Yahshua, see, has an unchangeable priesthood. All right, continue. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost part, uttermost, that come unto Yahweh by him, seeing he, live, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and for them, for the sins of the people. For this he did once, when he offered of himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmities, but the word of oath, which it, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Mm -hmm. Now read the next two. Now of the things which we have spoken, mm -hmm. this is the son. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitch and not man. All right, hold it right there. He's a minister of the true sanctuary that Yahweh pitched right. and not the man. Well, what is the sanctuary that Yahweh pitched? Mm -hmm. It's the universe, the angelic creation and the physical creation. See, here, Elohim, this is the true sanctuary that Yahweh pitched. Mm -hmm. And I pointed that because he, because see that the universe is contained within him. So really, so when Yahweh took on shape and form, this is the true tabernacle that Yahweh pitched. Right. And not the man. That's reflected in the universe. Because we say this all the time about the tabernacle pattern, about the migratory pattern here. Egypt. Wilderness, Canaan's land. This is a representation of the greater 
and more perfect sanctuary, mm -hmm. which is the universe. How so? Egypt is like the physical creation. Wilderness of Sinai is the angelic creation. Canaan's land is spirit law. Or you could say first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, of which the first two heavens emanate from the third. Right. The physical creation and the angelic creation emanate from the spirit law. Right. Which is the original. Which is what which is who Yahweh pitched and not the man. <laughs> now, over here, this is Pentecost plate. When the Holy Spirit is poured out, see, this is a descending and ascending plate. See, you got the Holy Spirit here. Let me I'll come over here. Here, you got Yahshua's death burial, resurrection, and its ascension. We've, we've told you this before. This is a fulfillment of Moses' third trip into the mount. Right. See, on Moses' third trip, he had to take his own heart up for Elohim to write right. into. He had to put that stone into the place where the first ones were cut out, and Elohim with his finger would write into that. And then Moses came down, all right? He came down wearing a veil because he was glowing, and the second table of stone that Elohim looked upon, or wrote upon, rather. So now, this is a fulfillment of that. Here's 10 days after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension. 10 days later, Yahweh, Yahshua, or the Holy Spirit, descended on the upper, 120 in the upper room, all right? And him descending on the day of Pentecost, 120, and filling them with the Holy Spirit, he was writing in their hearts and right. minds, just like the tables of stone that Moses brought up the second time, Elohim wrote in there, wrote in that heart. Here you have Yahshua. He see, because see, this happened before his death, burial, resurrection. But see, but once the Holy Spirit falls on these folks, it's brought back to their remembrance what Yahshua told them at the Last Supper. See, see, you know, eat, drink, this is my blood, this is my body broken for you. See. And he washed their feet, see, which is a type of a washing and regeneration. See, he washed their feet in fulfillment right. of Moses washing Aaron and his son's feet, consecrating them to the tabernacle. Yahshua is washing the disciples' feet, consecrating them for minister in the greater and more perfect tabernacle, which is the universe, once they receive the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay? Which is a fulfillment of of what was told, what was given to Abraham, the promise given to Abraham. Okay? See? After the order of Melchizedek, see? No beginning, no ending, and no successor. Right. Right? Now, if Levi was in Abraham's loins, then we know Isaac was there too. Mm -hmm. And he was blessed as you know, Melchizedek blessed Abraham. His seed was blessed. His seed was in Abraham, and, that was, and that's being blessed too. So now here we got the birth of Abraham. This is the seventh step, the most holy place. Now we're going to go down to the sixth step. The sixth step is the veil, the blue, purple, and scarlet. What would be the principle? It is blue, purple, and scarlet. Now what would be the principle here? Come over here to the migratory track. Mm -hmm. That would be like the Jordan River. What happened to the Jordan River? Open it up. opened. It opened and they went through. So you got to see a principle here of an opening. What is opening? Hmm. See, Sarah's matrix is opening and the birth of Isaac is happening. Right. Okay? And see, and this is the light. And see, look, he's a type. He's a type. He's a type of the light, the bread, and the intercessor. He's a type of Yahshua, the Messiah. Hmm. Okay? Um... If you can find that plate, the, the, the birth, of, uh, birth of Yahshua, yeah, maybe I could throw something else in there. But in the meanwhile, let's just look at this, okay? So now, again, look in the holy place. What are you looking for? Light, bread, intercessor, okay? So now here's the birth of Isaac, okay? So now, and look, they had a party for Isaac. You know, they, they, when he was weaned. Right. All right. And uh, just like they, they brought gifts, just like they brought Yahshua gifts, mm -hmm. like the wise men, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So now and we got Ishmael here. He's born, okay, 
Uh, maybe we should read Ishmael. Get uh, Joshua, I mean, Genesis, Genesis 17. Seventeen and uh, nineteen. Okay, seventeen and nineteen. Yes. And Elohim said, "Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And for Ishmael, I have heard heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him." and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be begot, beget, and I, have, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at the this, at this sit, this sit time in the next year. And he left off taking, talking with him, and Elohim went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskins in the selfsame day, as Elohim had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety and nine years old when he was circumcised, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Ouch. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son. Okay, good enough. All right. So Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised and also when Abraham was given the promise about the son. Now, a year later, Isaac is born and Ishmael is 14 years old. A year after Isaac is born, he is weaned. He's given a party, you know, a celebration. And Ishmael is 15 years old and he's cast out. All right? Now, here, when Isaac is offered up, Ishmael is nearly 40 years old. How old? 40. 40? Yeah. Oh. Ishmael is nearly 40 years old when Isaac is, because he's, he's almost 15, he's 14 years old right. than him. And so, I, um, Isaac here is 25 years old when he's being offered up by, by Abraham. That means that Ishmael is like, well, he's nearly 40. He's like 39 and a half or something <laughs> like that. But, you know, they used to te tell me, you know, teach me to round it off, round numbers off to the nearest mm -hmm. decimal. So it would be, he would be 40 years old when Isaac is offered up. Oh, well, that's a principle. Right? Right. So now we're coming down here. We're, we're descending. All right, now we're here, we're at the door. So we look at the door. What are we looking for at the door? Spirit. We're looking for a spirit. Why? It's a cup of holy anointing oil mm -hmm. at the door. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for a spirit. Matter of fact, let's read uh, um, Genesis, I think it's the 22nd chapter. Let's just read it. 22 and uh, 1. one. Yeah. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did prove Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he says, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Moriah? Moriah? Yeah. And offer him. Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering unto one of the, one of the mountains, which I have, will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took the two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son, and the clay wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place which Elohim had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come un unto you again, again to you. And Abraham took the wood the burnt offerings and laid it upon Isaac his son. Mm -hmm. so now, see, now he took the wood, laid it on his son. Why did he do that? That's prefiguring Joshua. Because Joshua, they laid the wood on Joshua. Joshua right. had to carry his own cross. Right. So he had to go Gotha. 
All right. See that? Okay, but continue. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and he went both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, Elohim will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Okay, so now Abraham said, My son... Elohim will provide. He didn't say Elohim will provide a burnt offering. No. He said Elohim will provide oh, himself mm -hmm. a burnt offering. Why? Because, see, that's what happened here. Elohim provided himself Self. as an offering. He didn't just provide an offering. He provided himself. himself. <laughs> okay? All right? Continue. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which Elohim had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and, the la and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay the son. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of the heavens and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest Elohim, seeing thou hast not withheld my son, thy son, thy only from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, and behind him a ram caught in the thickens by the horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for burnt offerings instead of his son. And Abram called the name of that place Yah Yahweh Shirky. I have Jeray. Jeray. As it is called to this day, Yahweh will provide. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's what it means. Yahweh will provide. Right. And he did. Yahweh did provide. He provided himself <laughs> as a worthy sacrifice. Okay, now here, let's look at this according to the pattern. We're coming down, descending. Here, let's get Hebrews 14 and 17. See, because Abraham had no doubt in his mind right. about offering up Isaac. And the reason why, see, again, we're going to read it. Because, see, as far as he was concerned, see, Elohim told Isaac, he said, I mean, told Abraham, he said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And then mm -hmm. turned around and said, okay, go offer him up. Well, the only reason why Abraham did that would be this. Okay, what do you want? Hebrews what? Hebrews 14, 17. No, no, There's no Hebrews 14, 17. Oh, 11, 17. I'm sorry. I'm, my, my error. I'm, I'm getting so We're old. all getting old. <laughs> 11, 17. I'm sorry. By faith, Abraham, yes. when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall all seed be called. According that Yahweh was able to raise him up, mm -hmm. even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. That's the reason why Abraham had no hesitation to offer him up, because in Abraham's mind, we got it illustrated here, mm -hmm. he killed Isaac, but Isaac was brought back to him in a figure. So that's why, because he didn't... See, that's the spiritual reality. That's the spirit revealing that to him. Mm -hmm. And then here we got Ab uh, Isaac, you know, on the you know, on the wood prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out in the hot sun. You know, they sweating the fire. They sweating. <laughs> and he's prepared for death. Mm -hmm. See? All right? So now that's showing in a decent... It's showing you the principles of the spirit, the water, and the blood. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's see if I can do this. Well, let me, let me get a clamp. <sighs> okay. Now, we have here the conception, birth, and flight of Yahshua the Messiah. 
when you start exploring the 40 plate charts, mm -hmm. when you start exploring them, all right, you will find out that some place, I mean, they all correlate with each other. Right. Bar none, because it's by this tabernacle pattern. But there are certain places that have affinities or certain closeness to it. This plate here showing the Abrahamic promise, the birth of Isaac, and the death, burial, resurrection of Isaac. See? See? Over here, it, it mirrors it over here. Mm -hmm. Because Isaac is a type right. of Yahshua the Messiah. See? Here, you got the angel Gabriel visiting, visiting Mary. Mm -hmm. Here, you see the Holy Spirit overshadowing right. Mary, just like over here. Melchizedek overshadowed Abraham, draw a line, just like these angels overshadowed the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. All right? And see, and, and, and see, Abraham had the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham was in, who was Isaac, was in Abraham when Melchizedek blessed him. Mm -hmm. Here, the angels putting the seed, who was Joshua, in Mary's womb. Mm hmm. Well, see, well, actually, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing that. Gabriel's just making the announcement. Right. But it's the Holy Spirit that's overshadowing her and placing the seed in there. Just as Moses here placed the Ten Commandment law in the Ark of the Covenant, the second tables of stone. Right. Okay? Here, you have the birth of Isaac, the opening of the matrix for Sarah. Here, you have the opening of the matrix for Mary. Mary. And you have the birth of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mary was forty. She was forty weeks in gestation, and she delivered. Okay. Uh, let's read Genesis twenty-one and eight. And we could say they're both virgins, right? Uh, uh, well, I don't. Well, as far as <laughs> Sarah, she in a type, I guess you could say, but she had sex. She had sex. Oh, I just couldn't have. Yeah, but she just never. She just could never conceive. Oh. Okay. You know, she was barren. She's a type, you know, a barren. She's just barren, you know. And so Yahweh Yahweh opened her womb just like Yahweh opened Mary's womb. There wasn't mm -hmm. nothing physically wrong with Mary because Mary had children later on. Oh, yeah. See, she had, uh, I think, like five sons. Let's see, five sons and three daughters, I think. Mm. I think something like that. But anyway, let's read. Genesis 21 and 8. Yes. And the child grew. And was weaned. Uh, talking about Isaac here. Mm -hmm. All right, the child grew. You see, he was born, and the child grew and was weaned. Well, a year later, read. And Abraham made a great feast the day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, and he had, and she had bore unto Abraham mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondswoman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. All right. Now, the point I wanted to get out of this was that Abraham made a great feast. Made a great feast for um, Isaac. Right. So people from all over Canaan's land came to the party. It's just a party. Let's just get it right. It was a birthday party for Isaac. And they brought, and they brought presents. Mm -hmm. All right? Come over here. Did you see the wise men here? Didn't they bring presents? Yep. Did they bring presents to Yahshua? Mm -hmm. See? Okay. All right. And so, and look, we're looking for principles. In the holy place, what is it? There's light, mm -hmm. bread, yes. intercession. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here, the light, they follow the light of the star. Right. Or the angel that, that they followed. That led them here. That was the light, which was really Yahshua, the baby Yahshua, astro projecting. Mm -hmm. Yahshua was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means place of bread. Mm. Okay? <laughs> okay? All right? And it's the Holy Spirit that's doing the, you know, the interceding here. Mm -hmm. All right? It's doing all of that. Okay? And it's just like over here. Let's see. Where's my screen? Light, Bible. bread, intercession. <laughs> See, they had a great feast here. They had a great feast, all right? Part of the feast was bread, right? Mm -hmm. They had it during the day. It wasn't at night, so it was sunlight. And it was Abraham who was the master of the feast. Mm -hmm. 
because he was the one that called it. Go to the intercessor, right? See, look for the principles in the story. Look for the principles in the story and how it's manifested. Okay? Now, when uh, here, see, see here, look. Here, Abraham, he was shown to him in a dream that if he killed Isaac, he would bring him back to him. You know, and just draw a line. Here, see, here the principle is, here, here Joseph's getting the dream. Right. Okay, he's getting the dream. And really, here's something a lot of people don't understand. See, see the angel that warned Joseph was Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See, because the baby's in the bed. <laughs> he's in the bed with them, and he's astral projecting into, into Joseph's mind. See, there's no such thing as a baby Holy Spirit. <laughs> Just because it's in a receptacle of a baby doesn't mean that the spirit in there is a, is a baby Holy Spirit. Right. You understand what I mean? Because Yahshua was fulfilling Jot and Tittle from, from the, I mean, as soon as, he, as soon as he gets here, he's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so now here's a dream with Joseph. That's the spirit. He's immersed in that dream. That's like a, you know, burial. And then and it warned Joseph about the death, about Herod trying to plan the death of the child. So they went, they, they went down into Egypt to flee Herod's wrath or Herod's death decree because he killed all the boy babies in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right? And so now that's using that. And here's the same thing here. All right? See, it's the same principle, different manifestations, but the same principles, the spirit, the water, the blood, same way here, the spirit, the water, and the blood, the principles, okay? Uh, where were we at? As far as scripture, I, I thought I had another scripture out there, or where, or where did we stop at? We stopped at Genesis, reading about the... Oh, we were reading about the, the feast. Yes. The feast. Uh, okay, let's keep reading. Oh, oh, we're back. Son. We're back. And Elham said unto Abraham... Let it not be glorious. In no, 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 no. He didn't say glorious. I know he didn't say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let it not be grievous. <laughs> no, because it wasn't glorious. I know. It wasn't glorious to Abraham. If you're my son, I don't want to lose my son. I, I, I worked hard for it. You know? <laughs> Go ahead. And Elham said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondswoman, and all that Sarah had said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondswoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. Mm -hmm. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took the bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulders, mm -hmm. and the child, and sent her away. And she departed, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. All right, now you went and wanted, you know, in other words... Ishmael is fifteen. Ishmael is fifteen years old here, when he's cast out or he's cut off from Abraham's life. Okay, keep reading. And the water and and spent in the bottle, and she cast the oh, thank you. Yeah, I read the book. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, and she went and sat down over against him a good way off. And as it were a bow shot, for she said, Let me not see the death of the child. Mm -hmm. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. Okay, now, as far as she was concerned, the child was dead. Mm -hmm. And she took the child and she buried it under a shrub. So now here's Ishmael. He is now dead and buried. Okay? Keep reading. And Elohim heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of Elohim called to Hagar out of the heavens and said unto her, What ailed thee, Hagar? Fear not, fear not. Mm -hmm. For Elohim hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Raise up, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Mm -hmm. And Elohim opened... That's good enough. Okay. And so she went back and she lifted the lad up from where she left him, hidden under a bush. That's a resurrection. So with Ishmael, that's a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Mm -hmm. And that gives Ishmael faith mm -hmm. because the witnesses are being made manifest mm -hmm. in his life. 
See, these are the witnesses of Yahweh, the death, burial, resurrection, or the blood, the water, the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the same witnesses that's, that Yahweh established from the beginning, that Yahweh has established all the way through history and through the scriptures, all the way up to now. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, okay, uh, we got about maybe, well, I think we can do 10 more minutes, I think. All right. Um, since I brought this up, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more. Let's get Matthew. Uh, Matthew 2 and 1. Might as well start there. Now when Yahshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came Magi from the east of Jerusalem, saying, saying, Where is he that is to be born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And Herod the king... Okay, now say he, that we've seen his star. Right. See, in the East. So now, and, and listen, <laughs> I know people always thought, and I did too, because I, I used to be an amateur astronomer. Hmm. And and, uh, and I thought the same thing, that the star of Bethlehem that they saw was actually, you know, a, an actual star or maybe a planetary conjunction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, once I found out what the true birth date was, see, I quit looking for the star of conjunction in December. Because there's no son, because the birthday he's not even born there. But see, people think that. Mm -hmm. See, that the, the the stars, you know, can, and so there's a big bright object in the star in the sky that the wise men followed, mm -hmm. but they didn't. But that's not what they followed. They followed the star. The star was Yahshua the Messiah. This baby right. was astral projecting to them, and they followed his star. The reason why I know that. I think it's in numbers. Uh, let's see. I remember reading it one time. Twenty four seventeen. Numbers 24, 17. Mm -hmm. I shall see him, mm -hmm. but not now, but I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A star out of Jacob. See, what do you be? The star. That's Yahshua. He's the star out of <laughs> Jacob. See, read. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corner of Moab, and destroy all the children of She's. Mm -hmm. Now, a star shall come out of. That's why it says we have seen his. Star. Right. We have seen his star. Star. From the, what, what do you mean? We've seen him because mm -hmm. he's the star. Rising star. See, astral projecting from mm -hmm. this baby. And he said, "Well, how do you know he's astral projecting?" Draw a line. Mm -hmm. to, this is the holy place. This is the holy place. This is the holy place. Did Yahshua astral project out here? The Moses out here right. in the holy place? Right. That's why I know. Okay, now go back to Matthew. Okay, um, Matthew 2. I'll start at 3 again. Mm -hmm. 2 and 3. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the, the chief priests, the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Messiah should be born. And he said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the cities of Judah? For out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the Magi, inquired them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed and 
Lo, the star which they had saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Miriam, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and mirth. Okay, now that, they, they have incense there. Why? Mm. Draw a line. Altars. Was the incense mm. here? What was, what was the ingredients of the incense here? Onika, frankincense. Frank, Stock deep, frankincense, and myrrh. Myrrh. See? So, it's the same. The incense here, come over here. They get, it's the, that's the principle. Right. The incense there. See? And they had gold. Why? Draw a line. Right. What were these objects made out of? Gold. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep reading. And being warned of Yahweh in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared to Joseph in a dream. See, now the angel of Yahweh, see, look at this. See, what, see this is a descending pattern, too. Mm -hmm. And we started up here. Now we're descending. Right. See, now he said he saw an angel in the dream. Why? Right, that's at the door. That's the spirit. Mm -hmm. See? The cup of holy anointing. Oil. That's the spirit. See? Why I come over here? Here's an angel over here. The same line. Uh -huh. All right? Abraham seen this. He saw this in a dream as well. About mm. Isaac, you know, being, being brought back to him mm. after being sacrificed. Mm. Agreed. Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the child to destroy him. All right, so now he's shown by the Spirit. Joseph is immersed in a dream. And he's warned to leave for fear of the death decree from Herod onto the child. So that's death. See? See, all spirit, water, and blood. Okay? Is there anything else there? And he rose and he took the young child and his mother by mm -hmm. night mm -hmm. and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, in fulfillment of which was spoken of Yahweh by right. the prophet, saying, mm -hmm. Out of Egypt. Have I called my son? Out of Egypt have I called my son. Go ahead and read the next line. Then Sister. Herod, when he saw that he was mocked by the Magi, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the Magi. Why? Because, see, draw a line. Draw a line. And see, we're here, here in Egypt. See, there was a death decree in Egypt where all the boy babies, see, two and under, were, were, were killed by Pharaoh. Right. See, looking for Moses. Okay. Uh, what are we doing on time? I think we can we can almost conclude. Anybody have any questions or any comments they'd like to make? Yeah, I have a question. When we read the part about how King Herod was troubled, it said all of Jerusalem was troubled. Yeah, because, you know? because he was crazy. <laughs> See, Herod the Great was crazy. He, Herod the Great killed his own son because he thought he was vying for him for the throne. That's how crazy Herod was. So they're watching him and say, oh, man, something's going to happen. You, 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 <laughs> we've done lectures with, with the Herod family oh, yeah. in the times past. See, hmm. King Herod was an Edomite. Right. What's that? An Edom, from Edom, Esau. They were descended from Esau. Not even with the tribe. You know, Esau and <laughs> Jacob. Yeah, they're descended from Esau. If you remember, Jacob... See, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, mm -hmm. and, his, and his children never, you know, they never got over it. See, they, they just, they never got over it. And so they've always had an animosity toward the Israelites. Even when they were coming through the wilderness, they were coming on their land trying to get to Canaan's land. And, uh, and they said, no, you know, they, they asked, they said, well, you know, look, we're your cousins, we're your brothers, you know, let mm -hmm. us pass by. And they was like, no, you can't. And if you do, you know, we'll hurt you. You know, so many words, that's what they said. They, they, they refused. See, so when the Herod, see, see, look, the Israelites, uh, see, the Israelites were given Canaan's land. See, they were, they were given Canaan's land, okay, because Esau sold his inheritance. Right. You know, he, he despised it anyway. 
okay? But that's not what he told his children. His children, they to he told his children, well, Jacob tricked me out of it. Uh, See? And, and he did because he pretended to be Esau, you know, dressed right. up, you know. You know, because Esau was a big, red, hairy man. So Joseph, you know, his mother, you know, you know, got him to wear some furries, you know, and make him, you know, think that his father was, was blessing Esau because his sight was dim. Mm -hmm. And so, but Esau despised it anyway because he sold his birthright for 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 a bowl of soup, you know. A lentils. Mess of pottage, yeah. or some, for some lentil soup, that's what I like Some bread. <laughs> you know, he saw, yeah, he said, that, what, what good is this birthright doing me now? I'm, I'm hungry. hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. And so he sold his birthright, which leads to what Yahweh said. He said, Jacob had my love. Esau have I hated. hated. Okay? So, um, damn, I was going to get a scripture. Um, um, let's see that. Genesis 36. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Genesis 36. Thirty-six and eight. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Sir, Esau in Edom. Now Esau is Edom. So whenever you see the word Edom, you think of Esau. Right. Esau, okay. Esau. That's Esau. You think whenever you see Edom, read. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomite. Edomite. Yeah, the Edomites. So whenever you see Edom or Edomites, Edomite. just think of Esau. Okay? Now, they were given Mount Seir, right. which is not in Canaan's land. In fact, it's the place where uh, the, the capital was Petra. If you ever see uh, a documentary, or even if you ever see, what was that movie, uh, Trans, uh, Transformers? It was this mm -hmm. one movie they did where they was in, uh, in the desert, where they had this giant temple. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who built it. The Edomites built that, you know? Mm -hmm. The Nabataeans, you know? They were the descendants of the Edomites, and they built, you know, these giant temples, you know, in the middle of the desert and stuff like that, because they that, that was, that's what was given to them, and they made the use of it. The the thing about Edom was Edom was prized for its sheep. Right. You know, they they had the best wool wool garments came from Edom. Like you know, just like today, we say you got on you got a, a purse. And say, oh, I can tell that's a Gucci. You know, or if you wear a certain suit, oh, that's a Brooks Brothers suit. It's the same way. You you had on some sort of a uh, wool robe that was really thick in quality and stuff like that. Oh, that guy's got a bozo. He's got on a bozo. Because that's that was the name of the city in, mm -hmm. in, in the province of Edom was Bozo. And so, you know, they say, oh, he's oh, oh he's from Bozo. He got you got you one of them Bozo coats, you know, <laughs> you know, keep you warm, you know, in the mountains, you know, that kind of thing. Look, uh, I think it's numbers. Let's read because see, let, let's just read that just to show you about the Edomites. Um also, those are the ones that took Joseph out of the out of the pit. No, those were the Midianites. Oh, Midian! Ah, oh. yeah, they were they yeah. were descended from Ishmael. Those yeah. are um, yeah, they're bringing down some herbs and dyes and stuff. Yeah. Get uh, numbers twenty and fourteen quickly, and then we can we can get out of here. Twenty and fourteen. Yes. And Moses sent messages from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus saith thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that has befallen us, how our fathers went down into Egypt, and we that have dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto Yahweh, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and has brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city of the uppermost part of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through the country. We will not pass through the fields, nor the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. Mm -hmm. We will not turn to the right, nor to the left, until we have passed the board, thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come down against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel say unto him, We will go by the highway, and if we and my cattle drank of thy water, then I will pay for it. And, mm -hmm. and will only, without doing anything else, go through my, on my feet. Mm -hmm. Now, 
just to show you. Here's Edom here. This is this is over here. This is Canaan's land. And here's Edom. This is where they're at. They wanna they wanna pass up this way so they can cross over, so they can get up here to the Jordan and cross over. But they can't get through Edom because you know, so which means they gotta go around, see, these folks here. Alright? Continue. Unto him, thou shalt not pass by. Mic so we can hear you. Lest I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, I will go by the highway, mm -hmm. and if it, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him, mm -hmm. and much people. And with a strong hand, thus Edom refused to give the Israel passage through his border. Wherefore Israel turned away from him. And always they had to turn aside and go around. Mm -hmm. And so there was always this antagonism mm -hmm. from Edom. Uh, if you can get the book of Obadiah right quick, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up. So, so that's where the, the Herod line comes from. Right, that's where the Herods come from. They come out of the line of Esau, mm -hmm. okay? Um, uh, read, let's see. Yeah, just read Obadiah. Read Obadiah 1. It's after Amos. Thus saith Yahweh concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the nations. Arise ye, and let us raise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the nations. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thy heart would have deceived thee. Thou hast dwelled in the cliffs of the rock, whose um, habitation is high that hath in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou art ex exalted, thy thou, though thou, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring down, say Yahweh. See, I'll bring you down. Bring you see, down. see, thou. Yahweh gave them Mount Seir. So, so that was a high mountain. So they was up on the mountains. They could look down on people, look at the past. And, <laughs> and so they, 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 thought, they thought a lot, a lot, awful lot of themselves. Right. Okay? All right. But now here's the thing about them. Now, see, now Obadiah comes around. He comes during the time when Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem uh -huh. and burnt down the temple. And see, uh, uh, oh. Oh, keep, uh, da, 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 da. So, jump down to eight. Thou, sh eight. thou shall I not in the day, saith Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out, understanding out of the Mount of Esau, mm -hmm. and thy mighty men, O Terah, Terah Pium, shall be dismayed to the end. That every one of the amount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thee, against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stood on the other side, in the day that thou strangers carried away captive his force, and the foreigners entered into their gates and cast lots. Upon Jerusalem, even thou was at the one of them. In other words, when Nebuchadnezzar came and raided this place, you you came right along with them uh, and yeah. raided right up and raided right along with him. You was like, oh, this is an opportunity for uh, us. So you came in just like Nebuchadnezzar did, and you did the same thing. You raided. It. Keep reading. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldst thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Mm -hmm. Neither shouldst thou have spoken proudly in the day of, of the distress. Thou shouldst not have entered into the gate of that, my people in the day of their calamity. 
Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their afflictions in the day of their calamity, nor in the lands. Nor have hands, no laid hands, hands, yes. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. In other words, they came and raided, just like Nebuchadnezzar raided the temple and tore it down. But he raided it because he took the altar, he took the, the lampstand right. and the table of shoe bread. But there were other items too, you know, gold cups and all that, and silver. silver and stuff. Yeah. The, the Edomites came up, came right in with the Babylonians, and they ganked too. Opportunity. <laughs> they mm -hmm. ganked. Yeah, that's how the kids say it. <laughs> yeah, they went. They they ganked. <laughs> they took everything. They, you know, they took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. it's just to show you the though they were brothers, Esau and Jacob, but it shows you the animosity between right. the two brothers that Esau had with Jacob, even down to when Yahshua comes along. Herod, who was of the tribe of Esau, Esau tried to kill him. See, that's why Yahweh uh, Yahweh said, "Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated." I hated. Mm -hmm. See, see, because in Esau's heart he despised his inheritance, right? Just like Satan in his heart he despised his inheritance, and he was cast out, right? See, that's see, this is a type of shadow of that, right? The show for of that, mm -hmm. he was cast out. Mm -hmm. Okay. But overall, Yahshua the Messiah is the king and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And we in this doctrine, we are called to be kings and high priests right. after the order of Melchizedek to operate in the greater and more perfect sanctuary, which is the universe. And look, when this creation is over, our bishopship or our priesthood is not over. Right. It continues on through the ages, right. through eternity, mm -hmm. because it is a priesthood without a beginning, or an end. without end, mm -hmm. and without a successor. Mm -hmm. And that true priest who fulfills all those things is one Yahshua the Messiah. Right. He is the true king. He is the true high priest mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek, who truly is officiating in this set of ages, which is truly the grand archetype pattern of the universe. Mm -hmm. And we in him, see, officiate with him. Mm -hmm. See, just as the high priest had to put on the garments of beauty and glory and the 12 breastplates, 12 stones on the breastplate, signifying the 12 tribes of Israel, likewise, at the end of this age, Yahweh will put us on. Right. And we will be glorified in him, mm -hmm. see, with a, you know, with a new body, with a new... We have an immortal spirit now, but to wit, we will have an immortal glorified body by which this immortal spirit can be contained in. Mm -hmm. And that body is Yahshua, the Messiah. Right. And we will travel throughout the ages, eternally, worshiping and giving glory and honor unto him. Right. Okay? Uh, thank you for, uh, um, for coming and watching us. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to, um, before we, we close, I'd like to give a a uh, shout out and a thank you to the curator, Mr. Khalif Rossman, yeah. for allowing us to use the space in his museum. We are in the African American Museum yeah. of Beginnings. Uh, it is located at 1460 East uh, Holt Boulevard, entrance number three. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, uh, they have a website. I would like to. Uh, Tell you about their website is www.taamb.org. Okay, that's their website if you wish to learn more about them. And again, we truly thank you, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Khalif, for for, let, for letting us uh, use your um, uh, your room. Um, Beautiful museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, really. well worth looking at. Yeah, uh, give us comment. <laughs> Say it again, bud. Well worth visiting. It's a beautiful museum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next week um, we'll be meeting at the Hamilton Steakhouse. Uh, we we've secured a room there, and um, uh, I'd like to tell Mr. Uh, Mr. Khalif that you know thank you very much. We appreciate uh, the hospitality he extended, and in, in, in appreciation, we're we're going to give you a donation. Right. You know, for uh, for allowing us to use the space and a complimentary Holy Name Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay, so we truly thank you for that. Next week, we'll be at the Hamilton Steakhouse, and we'll probably be meeting there if everything goes right. I got a good feeling about it, the place. But if not, who knows? Where's you know? that? That's, Covina. Oh, it's in Covina. <laughs> Down it's the 10. Covina, it's, in, it's in Covina, uh, off the 10. Uh, it's right next door to the Van Lee Hotel. Get off on Holt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, it's off Holt Street. I'll, 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 it's real easy to get to. I'll show you afterwards. Also, also I want to thank Dr. Felicia Hunt. I'd like to thank her. She was the one who, who told Valencia Dancer about the African American Museum of Beginnings, and she in turn was the one who contacted, contacted Mr. Mr. Khalif mm -hmm. about the about the place. So we, we want to thank her and Valencia for securing this for us, and also for the other places that we've got. Great so yeah, we're. <laughs> I'm just getting tired. I mean, we're, hey, we're gonna have class. I'm just right. getting tired of being a band of gypsies. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, we'll you know we'll land somewhere. We'll be settled, and then the, once we get a little bit of cop duty to go, then the more the more of y'all can come. It's just we kept it down to a few because the spaces we've been to has been kind of small. So we but but once we get this, and then then the rest of y'all can can start coming in. Um, yes, sir. Oh, the donation. That's a good question. Well, okay. This is what's what's up. Um, as far as donations, not not that I don't want them. I, I do, but mm. right now I just don't have the paperwork. I suppose we can, but then we're just gonna have to keep a record of who's donating or whatever. See, I already sent um, paperwork in to the California State nonprofit uh, for uh, yeah. To, for a nonprofit religious organization, which is called Archetype Pattern Workshop. I did that last month. I haven't received any word from them yet. Maybe I should get a feeler or something going. That's mostly what I've been waiting for, for the paperwork to come back. And then we'll set up something where, um, where people can donate uh, to help us out here. Uh, free will donation, because this is not about tithing. So right. That's what they do in church. Well, you're going to you know, I consider that funny that how a bunch of New Testament Christians are going to go into the Old Testament and going to say, well, you're going to tithe, you know, give me 10%, you know. Yeah. You know, but see, here's the problem with that. See, see, they had a tabernacle back here. Right. They offered up, you know, lambs and goats and turtle doves and stuff like that. If you got an altar in your church, see, that's what you, you know, then you probably need it for that, but see, you know, that's not how it got how it came about, tithing and stuff. No. Maybe we'll do a lecture on that one day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I hope I answered that question. Any other questions or concerns, comments anybody may have? Okay. Um, again, thank you very much for the time and your opportunity. And as always, uh, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Because he truly is the only hope of glory. Mm -hmm. And with those few words, Hallelujah. Okay, that concludes today's lectures. Uh, yes, we do have masks and we do have our shots. Okay, for those that are wondering out there. Uh, we're, we're keeping, uh, you know, in compliance here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, since we ended our class, we're going to end it with uh, doxology. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now unto him that is able to keep you from falling mm -hmm. and present you faultless with his presence with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. To the only wise Al him our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, be on glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both for all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi, I can't wait.